Hello and welcome students. In this module, we learn about the landforms of the earth plains. Let's see the definition. A level or gently undulating land with relatively minor differences in elevation less than 150 meters above the sea level is known as plain. Plains may be completely level or gently rolling topography. They have gradual slope, extensive flat areas and low altitude. So let us check this. Plains have a very gentle slope and they are like very very gently falling slope. They are very, uh, they have low altitude means they are not uh, having great height and they extend over a very large area. So these are the general characteristic features of plains. Let us proceed. This is a picture you can see that the a very very large area has been occupied by green vegetation by the green fields where mostly farming is being done or the green grasses here especially for animal rearing so uh, this is a typical topography of a plane now if we learn how a plane is formed so plane is formed by both internal as well as external processes like degradation if you remember the agents of erosion they take away the sand silt clay the sediments and then they deposit it in a low lying area this we had discussed earlier like an highland is eroded highland is gradually eroded and a low land is gradually filled so like this an equilibrium is uh, tried to be attained every time the nature tries to attain a balance or equilibrium and this is why the agents of erosion, weathering, gradation, they keep on working continuously. The Great Plains of India. So here we have the example of the Great Plain of India. Its average height elevation is 200 meters, but by the time it reaches its delta uh, region, its height uh, is only 6 to 10 meter. Rivers usually flow over the plains and when the river reaches its mouth that is near the sea this is the sea area then its slope become very very low so here maybe the elevation of great indian plain is like 100 or more than 100 meters above sea level here the elevation is very less which is only 6 to 10 meters above sea level so this is the meaning of this point that the great uh, plain of India has average elevation of 200 meters but by the time it reaches its delta region it is just 6 to 10 meters above sea level. Now we move to the types of plains. There are two major types structural and depositional. Structural plains are mostly formed due to tectonic movements that are earth movements whereas depositional plains are formed by the different agents of deposition like fast moving wind, river, ocean waves and glaciers. So they carve the land continuously and they erode material and deposit them in the low lying areas and lead to the formation of different plains. So the depositional plains are of different types, alluvial plains formed by the action of a river, glacial plains formed by the action of glacier. Lacustrine plains are formed when sedimentation takes place in a lake. Lowest plains are formed by the action of wind and coastal plains are formed by the action of waves. So we will discuss them one by one. Structural plains are relatively undisturbed horizontal surfaces on the earth. They are structurally depressed areas of the world that make up some of the relatively extensive natural lowlands. Now, uh, plains are often known as lowlands because they have a very low relief, their height or elevation is very low. So the very good examples are Great Siberian Plain of Russia and Great Plains of USA. So let's have a look. This is the Great Siberian Plain. It is close to the poles. So the rivers like Ob, Yenisei and Lena, these rivers when they drain uh, themselves in the Arctic Ocean, their mouth freezes during winter. So as the mouth of these rivers freezes during winter, so the water which is coming from the highland 
because the river starts from high area high land the water spreads all around because it cannot drain itself as the mouth is frozen so the water spread all around and make this area marshy and swampy so it forms a very big plain and this is known as siberian plain now the structural plains are also formed when continental shelf emerge due to internal forces of the earth suppose this is a land and this is the sea now if due to some earth movement land will suddenly emerge above the sea this portion of land has sorry i'll write again this was the continental portion which was and this portion was covered with water it's under the water now if due to certain earth movement a part of it will come above the water this portion has come above the water so this has formed the plain it is having low height because it is just little above the sea level but it has come above the water so it has formed a plain which is known as structural plain so example very good example of such plain is in india itself that is malabar coastal plain of kerala it is formed by the emergence of continental shelf the area which is of the continent which is just below the water when the continent ends and the ocean begins that area which is under the water is known as continental shelf when that region is uplifted due to some tectonic movement such plains are formed let us see this is the malabar coastal plain in india it is formed due to the emergence of the continental shelf area now structural plain is over we will move to the depositional plains as i told you depositional plains are formed by deposition of sediments by various agents of nature like wind running water etc so let us take a quick look types of depositional plain the first one alluvial plain now students alluvial plains are of three types there is subdivision because alluvial plains are formed piedmont or alluvial plain which is formed at the foothills of the mountainous areas flood plains formed at the course during the course of the river when the river comes into the lowland and delta plains formed when the river is about to meet the sea so at different stages different types of plains are formed by river this is known as alluvial plain let us start the piedmont plain piedmont alluvial plains the word piedmont refer to an area at the foot of the mountain now when a river when a river come down and reaches the foot of the mountain this area is the foot of the mountain then all the sediments spread like a fan because suddenly the slope reduces the angle of the slope reduces and the river is no more able to hold uh, such a huge amount of sediment so it spread it out and it form a fan like structure so they are known as alluvial plains or alluvial fans piedmont alluvial plain or alluvial fans so a very good example in india is in the foothill region of himalayas which is known as bhabar in india see the picture from the highland the river has carried and you can see the the shape which has been given by the erosive action and depositional process of the river it, because this river might be seasonal so there is no water now but in rainy season this area is filled with water so we have one more picture see the river comes from here and when it comes down in the foothills the slope drastically reduces river is unable to carry the sediment so it spread it all around like a fan it form a fan like structure so known as a uh, piedmont alluvial plain or piedmont alluvial fans so i hope this is clear so the next in the type sub type of alluvial uh, plain is flood plain 
students i told you uh, that the alluvial plains are formed at three level by the river first when the river reaches the foothill here they form piedmont alluvial plain during its course it form flood plain and when it is about to meet the sea it will form a delta and that is called delta plain so the first second and the third so at three different stages the river will form uh, three different types of plains so here first one we have learned the piedmont alluvial plain now we will learn flood plain so when the river overflows its bank during the rainy season it deposit a lot of sediment so i'll show you a picture that will give you a better idea see the river so this is a season of rainy season and it's flooded so the water has spread over a large area it has overflown its bank and it has spread over a large area so this water is actually having sediment the sediment is getting settled here and is making the land more fertile and a plain is being formed every year because every year the river gets flooded overflows its bank and then it pour a lot of sediment and make the plain fertile and better so this is how a flood plain is formed by river now the third type of plain as i told you it, the river forms near its mouth when it is about to meet the sea that is a delta plain these plains are formed at the mouth of the river here the river flow very slowly due to excessive load you know children the uh, slope becomes so gentle that it's very difficult for the river to flow with a huge sediment amount of sediment so the river actually spread the sediments and the sediment obstruct the flow of the river you know a very interesting thing happens here when the river is flowing and unable to hold the load so it spread all around so the loads will collect like this forming a fan shape and the water will divide into narrow channels and start flowing these channels narrow channels are called distributaries the spelling is distributaries you remember tributaries tributaries are narrow uh, rivers or uh, streams that join the river but distributaries are formed when the river is actually divided distributed into narrow channel uh, during the formation of a delta before meeting the sea so these are called distributaries <clears throat> let us proceed so this is the concept of delta plain so we have learned about the alluvial plain and types let's proceed to the picture which will show you the nile delta so this is a delta plain formed by river nile you can see river nile the main channel is divided into so many distributaries these are narrow channels because the sediments have blocked the way and and the slope is very very gentle again this is another picture you can see the river is draining into the sea and here it's divided into several channel this is how the delta plains are formed now come to the next in the list of depositional plains the first one was alluvial second is glacial as i told you earlier glacial uh, plains are formed due to the action of glacier now how do they form i'll show you with a picture see the glaciers are heavy mass of ice the glaciers are heavy big mass of ice and when they come down slope they are so heavy and they are so large that they score and scratch the uh, surface uh, as they move against the slope of the mountain and they erode lot of material this material is deposited in the low land when the glacier starts melting so this is how these depositions leads to the formation of glacial plains you can see children the mark of the erosion and the deposition and the way the glaciers have moved this is actually the path the glaciers slide down and they erode the land and try to level the land they carry material from high land and deposit in the low land see one more picture this is how the glaciers melt they are melting and they are depositing the sediments now the third in the list is the lacustrine plain so how a lacustrine plain is formed the word lacustrine is actually related to lake these plains are formed when the beds of lake are filled with sediments brought by river and 
old uh, sorry an old lake basin gets filled with sediments to turn into large fertile agricultural plain so i'll draw it here and show you suppose there is a depression which is filled with water this is a lake because a river is there which is providing water to this lake now the uh, water is there and along with the water sediments are also being deposited in the layer in the lake so layer by layer the sediments will get collected and if the supply of the river water is cut off then the lake water will evaporate and this will lead to the formation of a like a strine plain which will be made up of sediments brought by river and by the later on by the evaporation of the lake water so this doesn't happen in a small duration of time rather very very long time is uh, taken and it depends on the situation that if the lake strine uh, plain will form or not it depends on several factors like if the supply of water from the river is cut then only the the plot can be arranged for the formation of a like a strand plain or due to excessive increase in temperature the water will evaporate the might be the river the channel of the river will also dry up and this will again lead to the formation of a like a strand plain so a good examples even from india we have the kashmir valley the plain of hungary are good examples of like a strand plains so kashmir valley has again formed due to the this process in which the lake was dried up and the sediments led to the formation of like a strand plain next is the lowest plain i told you lowest plain is formed by the action of wind depositional action of wind so lowest is very fine dust rich in lime and yellowish in color it is carried by the wind from the barren surfaces in the interior of the continent and are generally deposited along the margins of the desert so we know that wind is active in arid and semi arid region arid means dry or semi arid arid means less dry so arid regions are basically deserts so the wind carry the fine dust that is rich in lime and yellowish in color and this uh, loess is deposited especially in the margins of the desert it will carry till where the desert extend and then uh the velocity of the wind will reduce and then it will drop that those uh, material that is loess and like this loess plain has formed in northwest china western rajasthan and western parts of usa see the picture this is a typical picture of a loess plain you can see the color that is yellowish and the if we see the material by zooming the picture we will find they are fine particles mostly they have they are rich in lime now next in the category of depositional plain is coastal plain so the name itself tells that the action of ocean waves has led to the formation of such plains it is a result of the depositional work done by the sea wave example the plains in alaska and southern southeastern united states so there are many other examples of coastal plains you can see the picture the coastal plains this is the coast and beyond this is the plain which is formed by the action of the ocean water let us continue with the significance of plains plains provide fertile land for cultivation they have they are favorable for the development of transport and communication they are ideal site for for human settlement and also support navigation navigation is transportation through waterways see the pictures this is how plains support agriculture growing of crops uh, support human settlements plains also support or are ideal for construction of roadways and railways because they have a low relief they are comparatively flatter com uh, compared to mountains and plateaus so they provide good scope for the uh, manufact or oh, sorry for the construction of uh, means of transport and communication then they also provide scope for navigation that is the rivers can also be used for transportation so there is a wide scope in the plains because rivers mostly flow through the plains and they provide scope for the transportation via river ways so this is uh, the uh, one of the advantage of plain 
So now we in this we have uh, learnt about the advantages of planes. Thank you students. That's all we have completed with the topic landforms of the earth, mountains, plateaus and